Hey, Washington football fans, welcome back. So, we talk a lot about all the guys that Ron brought over from Carolina. You know, Kyle Allen, Jared Norris, Marcus Ball, Jordan Kunzak, mostly just extra bodies. This offseason, we signed Curtis Samuels and... I mean, he's surely going to move the needle more than anybody else that he's brought over. You know, maybe David Mayo and Tyler Larson that he's worked with before, you know, could too, but, you know, it's not very likely. But we don't see many of Jack's former guys, and maybe we should. Now, Jack seemingly didn't have the best of luck in the draft in his time in Oakland, but I think there's still some players that could end up, they could contribute pretty well in our roster. Now, we tried really hard to land Amari Cooper last season that he drafted, and we actually have David Sharp that he drafted in his last season in Oakland. But there are a couple of guys from his time that I think could possibly provide a pretty decent boost to this already stacked defensive group. On a side note, I've always kind of found it funny that a large portion of the players that didn't work out in Washington ended up playing for like the Falcons or the Jets. But then I was looking at Ron and Jack's guys, you know, from the past, you know, five years of drafts, or three, three years of drafts, and these guys basically look like they're just scouting for the Buffalo Bills. Like, the amount of guys that are currently playing there is is kind of funny. I know I came across four or five just in three years of drafts. Ron and Jack's 2015 fourth-round selections, and it's funny that that they actually happen to have traded Oakland and Carolina traded fourth-round selections, but both of their guys from that draft are currently offensive linemen for the Bills. I just just thought that was funny looking at that. So, anyway, I'm going to kick this off with Jack's uh, first-round pick. 24th overall in the 2017 draft, his last year in Oakland, with Ohio State cornerback Garyon Conley. Now, he's currently a free agent, and as a result of injury, he got to work very little with Jack in his first season before Jack was fired. But Conley... He was a guy that had a ton of potential coming out of college. Many people saw him as the second best cornerback in the draft after his teammate, Marshawn Lattimore. But as far as athleticism goes, I mean, this is a guy that's, you know, got a 9-2-3 RAS score, 6 foot tall, 200 pounds, 33 inch arms at a size, which is really get great, you know, reaching in, breaking up passes, 37 inch vert, 10 foot nine broad, and he runs a four four forty and good agility drill, six six eight on the three cone. Throughout his career he's shown some nice flashes, but he just hasn't been able to put it all together. And I think maybe if he came to Washington, reunited with Jack, he could possibly, you know, get some of that coaching that he might have missed out on. Or possibly tap into, you know, some more of his potential behind this dominant defensive line. At least, you know, he'd be a high quality depth piece with a lot of upside. In in this less difficult situation as a cornerback for Washington. I mean, it's one of the best situations you can be in as a corner, and it really might help him. Who knows? He could also possibly benefit from a move to free safety. I mean, if he definitely has enough speed, he's got nice change of direction, 
he could play the back end and come up and make some plays. He's also, he'd just be another former first-rounder to add to this defense. It's already packed full of them. Imagine if both of our corners, you know, were first-round picks to go along with all the first-round picks on our our defensive line, and now we have them in the linebacker group. Like, it'd just be crazy if we could get in here and get it to work out. Now, as a free agent, I know he would be thrilled to jump into this squad. He's currently not on a team to think that he could come and play with this defense, with these coaches. I'm pretty sure he would he would jump at the chance. And having this guy as our third or fourth cornerback coming off the bench or possibly free safety could be crazy. If he's healthy, this guy's only 25 years old. He should still be on an NFL roster, you know, somewhere. Like, he still has so much potential. Like, it's horrible that that players get given up on so early. But he should be on a team somewhere. Why not ours? You know, bring him in. Try him out. And then right after him, Jack's second second round pick in 2017 is a guy I think could be the biggest boost to our defense out of all these guys. Obi Melifuanu. Safety turned corner. He never really got to play for Jack injur- uh, Jack either because of injury in his first season, and then Jack got canned. But Obi is an absolute freak of nature. I mentioned him in my last freak video, but I doubt anybody made it in that far, which is a shame. Because I think he could be a huge addition to the linebacker group. Like he's played everywhere else, safety, corner. Which is crazy. Like this guy, six foot four, two hundred and twenty five pound athletic freak. The one place I would think it made the most sense to try him at was linebacker. I mean, just looking at him, thirty two and a half inch arms, six foot four, two hundred and twenty five pounds, seventeen bench reps, forty four inch vertical, eleven nine broad. 4 4 40, like, and his agility at at corner, you know, is a little questionable, but that same agility at the linebacker position is almost elite. And just a player uh, with this 9 4 RAS score, when adjusted to the linebacker position, now, his weight brings his score down, which is crazy. A 224-pound linebacker is where they thrive in the current NFL. Like, 224 pounds, that's kind of where guys are now. If you match this guy up with our first-round pick, Jamin Davis, it's scary. It's like looking in a mirror. He's a legit 6'4". Well, right on the cusp of it. Where, you know, Jamin's six three and a half. Jamin does have ten pounds on him, possibly. We don't know where Obi's setting that weight wise. He's got two inches more on vert on Obi. He's got nine more inches on the broad. He's that flat f- four four where Jamin's official score was four four eight. I know we got reports of like the four three nines, but. Like, these guys just match up perfectly. We need to bring this guy in. He's unsigned, which is, it baffles me. We could bring this guy in that might end up making our linebacker group the scariest in football. Just imagine him and Jamin on the field at the same time. All that speed, this monstrous athleticism. Wow, it it would just be crazy. At the very least, give this man a call. Like, an athlete of his caliber, once again, should not be given up on so easily. Make it happen, Jack. 
switching him to linebacker, where I think he would fit the best, could make him the most versatile player on the team. He can literally play any position behind the D-line. Coupled with his insane athleticism, he fits Ron Rivera's philosophy of super athletes and positional flex perfectly. It's a guy that should be on this team. We just signed Gabe Wright, the sixth defensive tackle on the team. We're we're pretty sure the top four are all starter quality. That guy's never going to see the field. Bring in this guy, you know, that would have a chance to make the team and make the team better. And finally, in 2017, Jack signed an undrafted free agent, linebacker Brady Sheldon. This was another guy that was buried deep on my last Athletic Freak video. He's 6'5", 235 pounds at the time. He's gained some weight since then, so he's not so rail thin. Another freaky athlete that would fit the team perfectly. Like I said, 6'5", he's about 235. He ran a 4-5-2, 37 vert, 10-5 broad. Just another great athlete. Jack signed him to the practice squad in his rookie year, activated him late, but he didn't see the field. He got signed off the squad to the Browns, and then they waived him. Then the Packers put him on the practice squad for two seasons, where... He actually got playing time in the preseason and showed some really promising stuff. In week four of the preseason in 2019 against the Chiefs, and in week four, that's when, you know, you're going to have the most starters taking the reps. So he was playing against, you know, pretty high caliber guys, even though it was preseason, against the Chiefs. PFF graded him the highest defensive player of the week with an 89.8 overall, and then they gave him a 90.8 coverage grade that was the highest of the 48 other linebackers that had taken at least 20 snaps in week four of the preseason. Like, that's those sound like traits that could definitely help out our linebacking core. Like, that's where we struggled, was coverage at a linebacker level. To have this long, lean, fast, you know, guy that can cover would be perfect. Seems like a great candidate to uh, rekindle a relationship with old Jack to me. With Sheldon and Obi added to our linebacker group, it could help solve our linebacker coverage deficiency, which in turn would let us actually play three linebackers on the field instead of relying on nickel which, again, solves our biggest problem, which was stopping the run. Like, how do we have a number two overall defense and then we're 20-something against the run? It was kind of embarrassing. But being able to have extra linebackers on the field because the linebackers can cover passes allows us to defend the run better. We don't have Kendall Fuller out there getting run over by a 220-pound running back. We have linebackers out there that can, you know, make tackles on the running back and defend passes. These are the kind of guys we need to really put the defense over the top. And they're out there, free agents to be had. So, yeah, that's my video. Thankfully, a little quicker than normal. Uh, But, yeah, let me know what you think. Should we give these guys a call? I really think we should. These... Three players in particular have loads of potential. Haven't had, you know, quite a great shake of things. And, uh, yeah, just bringing them back to Jack, the guy that saw what he saw in them to begin with, could really help boost their confidence, give them the coaching they need and help them and help this team. So yeah, let me know what you think. 
If you guys listened, I love you. By the way, please subscribe. Really close to 400. Would like to get past it. So, yeah, like, comment, share, subscribe. And I love you guys. Peace.